Hello, I'm Sharon Harvey Davis. Welcome to Discussions Across Differences. This video training series is used by Ameren to promote an inclusive environment among our coworkers, one that is driven by our core values of respect, teamwork, and commitment to excellence. Inclusive conversation is something that may not happen naturally for everyone, especially in a diverse environment. But we have learned that the benefits of creating inclusive conversations lead to greater diversity of thought, which stimulates increased creativity and innovation. It helps Ameren to continuously improve in order to better serve our customers and power the quality of life. Recent events in Ferguson impacted Ameren coworkers and customers. This has demonstrated the need to respectfully discuss these issues and improve our ability to listen and understand differing perspectives. Ameren is making our diversity and inclusion resources available at no cost to help in the building of diverse and inclusive places to live and work. Critical conversations across the wide range of diversity found in our communities requires personal courage. Courage is what helps us bridge that gap between what we say and what we do. Courage also helps us to lead, embrace change, and make a meaningful difference. And it has been a big factor in the life of the person you will hear from next. Please take the story you're about to hear of John O'Leary to heart and use his story as an inspiration to do more, to reach across differences, and make a positive impact in your community. Thank you for your participation and engagement in our Discussions Across Differences series. Joining us today is renowned motivational speaker and author, John O'Leary. John, welcome. Yeah, delighted to be with you. Thank you. We're so happy to have you. When you were just nine years old, you were badly burned over 100% of your body. Many did not think you could possibly survive. Mm -hmm. And, you know, when you think of a situation like that, it would certainly be understandable to just give up, to quit, and not work through that pain. But you didn't quit. Right. And you kept going. It'd be good to know what you tapped into, where you found that strength to carry on, even in the face of the tremendous pain you must have endured for many years. Yeah, and candidly, that pain continues even today, Karen. The, uh, the day I was burned, I was brought into the hospital, and strangers all around me, but eventually my mom and dad walked in separately. And my dad walked in, very first thing he says is, I love you, which blew me away because I was the cause of the fire. I'd accidentally blown myself up. And then my mom walks in right behind my dad, and she again tells me she loves me. Mm -hmm. And I remember asking, Mom, am I going to die? And she looks at me and says, do you want to die? Because it's your choice, not mine. And I responded, no, I don't want to die, Mom. I want to live. And her response was, good. Then, baby, take the hand of God. You walk the journey with him, and you fight like you never fought before. And on that day, and then each day subsequently, I think that's good advice to follow in life. Um, we have a strong faith life, a strong spirituality. I'm blessed with a great family. My mom and dad are both still alive 30 years later. Today I'm married. I have four children, strong community. I could have never, ever done any of it on my own. But with faith, with spirituality, with family, with community, uh, we've been able to carry on and, and choose to fight on. You know, in your book, On Fire, that you wrote, you say, you can't always choose the path you walk in life, but you can always choose the manner in which you walk. Hmm. So can you elaborate a little bit on the manner in which you've chosen to walk? Yeah, you know, I, I may walk with a bit of a limp. I may walk with hands that are a little bit different. What I've decided, though, and discovered in time is people frequently accept you for how you present yourself. And I don't mean just physically. Mm -hmm. I mean the aura and the attitude that we carry into a room. Uh, again, with my parents' help and the help of my therapists and doctors and nurses and friends, I've always viewed myself as being a very healthy, normal, happy little guy. And I found that people would then treat me in the same kind of way, where they accepted me into their groups, they accepted me into their families. I got jobs professionally in St. Louis. I'm now traveling the world as a presenter. I think not because of my scars, but almost in spite of them. 
I, I'm not defined by my hands. I'm certainly not defined by my, my skin, my, my scars. I'm defined by how I show up, by the attitude we bring with us and by the love that we reveal. Your recovery clearly from, or anyone who goes through this, is not a one-time event. You don't get sick and you get cured and you go home and everything right. is right. This is ongoing, dealing with this. But can you talk about one time where you, on reflection, you know that you had to tap into your own courage to get through what was going on? Gosh, I mean, so I could take us back to being in a wheelchair and having therapists strapping you in with a towel in your mouth as they're bending your joints and it's so painful, they're muffling your cries. But I think that's hard to relate to. I think it's easier actually to say the most courage I've ever shown was getting up this morning, looking at a reflection in the mirror that is broken and beat down by scars, and deciding to smile anyway, deciding to pop in the shower, wash my hair, comb it over to the side, put on deodorant, shave again, and do life as effectively today as I, as I did yesterday, and maybe even better. So I think real courage is not in moving through the physical adversity. It's moving through the emotional adversity each one of us faces and then choosing to do things even better today than we did the days before. It's amazing to think, but I think the fire and the scars have led me to be more compassionate, more empathetic, more alert, more grateful for life, more present to others, and more expectant to make today matter more than I would have otherwise. Most people, I'm 38, almost 39, expect to have their 40th birthday and their 41st, and maybe when they're 80, they'll start thinking about death. I think about it every day, not only because I was a chaplain, but because I, I was in that bed where tomorrow was not for sure. Mm -hmm. And today, I don't think, I don't take for tomorrow for granted, which means if you don't take tomorrow for granted, you wake up to the beauty of today and you did the best you got with it. So what are the lessons you've learned what, from drawing upon this inner courage, the, what you've learned through what you've endured that have contributed to your strength as a leader? Right. So I, I think there are three questions we all ask every day. Why me? Who cares? And then what more can I do? And we can ask them as victims or we can choose instead to uncross our arms and ask them as victors. So if you're trying to lead forward, you're trying to be safe, you're trying to be diverse, you're trying to make a difference at work or at home or anywhere else in between, ask those same three questions, but ask them through a different lens. No more victimhood, no more blame shifting. Be empowered to say, why me? Why am I still alive? Why am I so blessed? Why do we get to raise our family in the freest country in the history of the world? It's shocking if you really sit back and think about it. So why me? We're lucky. Let's act like it. Secondly, who cares? It's not easy. There are days where I'm personally in physical pain, where I have some struggles that nobody else knows about. Who cares? Get over it. Get out of bed. Seek to make a difference. I always find if your attention's on others, many of the things that would have kept you trapped in bed disappear. So many of these, oh, poor me, disappear when you're focused on someone else in need. And then finally, I learned this one from one of your colleagues, Jack Buck, what more can I do? The great question of, indif of, of making a difference, mm -hmm. of choosing significance over success. So what more can I do to ensure tomorrow's even better than today? So I would encourage each of us as we lead our lives going forward to ask those three questions through the lens of a victor, not a victim. When Amron plans this event, what we're looking at is diversity and inclusion. What do you see the role of courage in diversity and inclusion? How do they relate? Uh, it's, it's the same word in many regards, and the third word that might fit in there is love. We can't do inclusion, we can't do diversity, we can't do courage, and we can't do life without showing up with an awful lot of love. It allows us to drop our borders, our boundaries, our box that we live in and that we put people over there in. One of the ways that I most was transformed um, to be better for those around me was to become a big brother. Uh, you know, I, I didn't have a whole lot of friends outside of my community when I was 24. And then I became a big brother. I met a little man named Travion who was in fifth grade at the time. He became one of my best friends. This little African-American poor kid who had never really met his dad, who had no real male figure in his life, he was my buddy. I worked with homework on him. I worked through school issues with them, talked about how to treat ladies with them. And on July 19th last year, my wife and I were lucky enough to sit in a church and watch Travion marry the love of his life, a little girl named Fiona. He's been married over a year. They just found out they're expecting. Travion has graduated high school, graduate college. He's a pastor in a church in, in Columbus, Ohio. He's awesome. 
And I would have never met him without seeking diversity, seeking inclusion, showing up with a little bit of courage, and then adding in a little bit of love. And it took a little courage on your part to reach out, as you said, beyond the community you were familiar with. Oh, gosh. And I was always worried, how will he respond to me? I wasn't worried about the other way around. I was worried, how will he see this, this white guy with hands that are broken down? He walks a little bit weird. He's not from the area. How will he reach out and receive me? And yet what I find in all diversity and in all inclusion is when you put yourself out there honestly and authentically, people embrace you. We're more alike than we know, than we admit. And that's a healthy thing. But the only way we fully know that and the only way others will fully embrace it is if we decide to show up. And that does take courage. Thank you, John. Yeah. This will be a wonderful addition to our day. It's my pleasure. Thank you guys for your work. Thank you. You're welcome.